So you've probably heard of Wireshark, and if you're a skid, you probably think it's just for pulling IPs. Wireshark shows you the source and destination IPs of the packets, but that's not even the main kind of purpose of it. The main purpose is to actually analyze what's in those packets, not just like, oh yeah, this IP to this IP. Uh, these are the remote IPs. Oh, I, I pulled your IP. <laughs> Dude, like, that's not even the main purpose of it, okay? Yeah, so I'm gonna introduce you into the world of actual packet analyzing and after demonstrating how it works i'll tell you how to protect yourself against it by the way this video is for educational purposes only i'm not responsible for any way you misuse the information in this video this is only meant to educate you to learn how to defend against this attack not how to use it so yeah because someone on your network can actually capture and analyze your packets if they run an arp spoofing attack against you ARP spoofing is a whole other topic on its own, and it's actually one of my favorite things, so I'll probably make a video on it. But in simple terms, it's basically when you're just the middleman in between the router and the target computer, so the traffic always goes through you, you just reroute it. So the attacker is able to see all of the target's network traffic, and then can analyze the packets and sometimes find sensitive information. It's actually how like the IP puller link, I made a video on that, it runs an ARP spoofing attack, but against your game console. Because from what I know, there isn't an actual like packet analyzer for PlayStation or Xbox. So your computer becomes the middleman between the console and the router, and all the network traffic goes through you, and then that way you can see the IPs, and that's basically like the IP pulling. That's how it works. But anyway, let's get into it. Okay, what's up guys? <coughs> on my PC now. Okay, so you should have Wireshark downloaded for this, obviously. So we're gonna open up Wireshark and you're gonna see a bunch of different interfaces. You wanna choose them depending on uh, what exactly you're doing, like who you're testing this on. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna test it on myself. I'm not actually running a spoofing attack. Actually, you know, either way you could do it, so. Okay, so for the interfaces, um, I'm just gonna choose Wi-Fi. For different people, it shows different things. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's go. So, I have this page open, and what this is, this is just a HTTP site uh, which, that just has a login, and we're gonna try to capture the username and password. So we already see a bunch of packets showing up. Oh, look, there's actually an R packet, see? Who has this, tell this guy, so yeah. And yeah, we just see a bunch of stuff coming in. Uh, all right. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna reload the page. Okay, we see HTTP. Okay, it's picking it up. We got login.php. Yup, right here. Um, so that's a GET request. You know, we got uh, all the icons. Uh, we got the page, whatever. We're going to use a POST request to actually put the username and password in. So for the username, so we can perform this demonstration accurately. Uh, I'll type Ebola was here. Ebola was here. Username, username zero, password, Ebola was here. Um, and then we're gonna click on login. Now we can stop capturing. Okay, so let's see what's going on in Wireshark. Um, okay, we already see post requests. Uh, okay, oh, it is kind of messy. We see a lot of different stuff and also I don't know why I'm getting pinged a thousand times by ice. Bro, this is literally a DDoS, what the fuck? Okay, so now we're gonna have to filter through all of this because uh, you know obviously we're not trying to look through each individual packet and find the stuff that we're looking for. That's just stupid. It's a waste of time. So display filters. This is this is where we we set filters where we can find specific packets, which is what we want. So an attacker, if he was spoofing, first he'd specify the source IP. So IP dot source equals to whatever IP. So, so their IP can be like I don't know targets IP they would put this in but I'm just running it on myself so I don't need to do that uh, actually I can just leave my own IP and then they also need to specify that they're only looking for uh, that HTTP protocol because there's a bunch here there's UDP MDNS SSDP TCP like what like a lot of the stuff we don't even need most of it we don't even need so we're only gonna get HTTP packets so we do and and HTTP press enter and it'll only show you those packets. But we see get login.php. 
post user info.php. So since we only have three packets here, I'd be willing to guess that this is the, the password. The, the, like when we press the login button, this request was made and we can analyze it here. So now this is what Wireshark is like really good at. So that's like the main purpose. So uh, yeah, we see our user agent down here. Okay, so this is probably it. Um, we're gonna go to HTML form URL encoded. Press this little arrow right here, and here you go. Username zero, Ebola was here. This is this is the info. And this is why no website uses HTTP anymore. This is why all of them use HTTPS. Cause um, literally, yeah, if, if some hacker in Starbucks saw you were doing something important on your computer, he would start a spoofer, he would open Wireshark, and he would start capturing. And if it was all HTTP, if you were like putting in your credit card info somewhere, he would get that. If you're logging into websites, he would get that. He would get everything. And um, and yeah, and that's a really big issue. Like that's obviously just like, that's way too OP. You can just get anyone's stuff. Like So 99% of websites right now are HTTPS. And see, yeah, Chrome tells us. So even if you are on a HTTP website, you see this not secure right here. Your connection to this site is not secure. You should not enter any sensitive information, passwords, credit cards. Yeah, it could be some hackers. So whenever you see this, now you know why. This is because they can sniff it using a packet analyzer by spoofing you. And yeah, that's not good. Okay, so that was an example with HTTP. Um, now I'm gonna show you an example with like, uh, kind of like Telnet, if you know what that is. It's kind of just like a console login thing. Yeah, I'll just show you. Okay, so for this next example, um, I'm gonna be just connecting to myself. So I'm gonna have to listen on a different interface. Since I'm not connecting to like a different website or server, I'm just connecting to myself uh, for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna be on the adapter for loopback traffic capture, not on the Wi-Fi, because it's not gonna show up here. It's gonna show up here. So we're gonna go into here and now we're capturing. So now I'm going to be making kind of like a telnet connection if you know what that is it's basically where you just access someone's shell uh, you enter your username and password and you can administrate their computer so this is my computer right now like i can type commands and um if i telnet to an another computer so telnet to like uh i don't know some ip address and then like enter the username and password and if they have a telnet server running then i'll then i'll be using their command prompt uh, i'll have remote access so that, that's what a Telnet server is. Now, Telnet is actually not secure. So um, if you're connecting to a Telnet server for, I don't know, work or forever, just, I don't know, no one really uses Telnet these days. Not really a practical example, but um, still good to know. All of the bytes show up in Wireshark or, you know, they're not encrypted basically. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's not safe at all. And I'll show you guys right now. So I have a server running. I'm just going to go telnet over to myself. This IP, if you didn't know, is a loopback IP. So this is just basically saying like me, like this isn't an actual IP. Like it's for everyone. This is themselves. They're just pointing back to themselves. It's called loopback. That's why we're on loopback traffic capture. And it's on port 3000. So over here in Wireshark, we see the ports. Um, some random like five digit, you know, whatever the hell this is. This is not, not what we're looking for. Uh, let's say we know it's on port 3000. Now we connect. Boom. Okay, so we see 3000, 3000. Okay, something's happening. Now we're going to enter the username. Uh, I'm going to go with something a little different this time. We'll try uh, username one, username one this time. And I don't know if you noticed, but every time I type a character, that's a packet. So it's not like HTTP where one packet holds your username and password. When it comes to stuff like uh, Telnet, each character, each individual character is sent as a, like as its own packet. So like, see, whenever I, I type something, it sends two packets. And for the password, we'll use one of my personal favorites. <laughs> no, no, and no. Enter. Login successful. And that's all Wireshark needed so we can stop capturing. Okay, so the filter is basically the same as last time. We specify the IP source and um, of course, like it's loopback this time. So I'm, there's, uh, yeah, there's no point. 
because it's loopback all of the sources and destination it's like all the same so it doesn't matter but um instead of http last time it was http now it's going to be tcp um, i'm pretty sure all of these are tcp anyway so uh yeah i don't think that matters either but this time we know it's on port 3000 we can specify that port by going destination tcp.port here we go here we go and then we just go equals to 3000 and yeah so there's still a lot but yeah we can get through this so now as we go on we'll kind of like try to decipher what the packets are doing like what's going on through all through the information here we don't really see any any strings being sent it's just bytes this for the connection okay so here we go enter username now this was sent from the server so usually you wouldn't see this uh because this is like the server side but we're seeing this because we're, we're the server and the um, and also the client so it's over one packet so um enter your username so this is nothing now this is you this is nothing now this is s this is empty e we ignore this one r so user okay so the reason why we have to skip over um skip over a packet each time is like i said before we're the server and the client in my demonstration so that's why we're seeing like double of everything so if i connect it to an actual telnet server this wouldn't happen but you know whatever okay so yeah that's the username that's the correct username we have the username now and if you're wondering how they like decipher these strings in the first place it's just like bytes and um each byte is a character so this is e n t e r blah 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 and then they can just you know and they just decipher it into strings they all all the strings are over here so you see everything okay so the password is being entered here okay one two three four boom okay so and then we see the one byte again and um this is after some other packets happened uh so after our username input so this is probably the password you can infer that and do we see any more data one byte no we see two bytes and um this yeah no this isn't the password this isn't anything so we're not worrying about this because we know that whenever we do the prompt it's only one byte uh, any other one byte no 19 bytes and yep and that's it so now we intercepted the username and password from that telnet connection username 1455 and uh, 1234 now how can you protect yourself against this okay so for the http example just if you're on a public wi-fi and even for good measure on your private wi-fi avoid putting sensitive information into those forms on http websites so that's for http now for http and telnet something that you can do is turn on a vpn so i'll show you an example right now uh, let me reopen Wireshark. So I'm going to be capturing packets. So I'm going to ping Google. And um, ICMP should show up. Yeah, ICMP right here. Uh, so we know that our traffic is being captured. Now I'm going to turn on my VPN. Okay, so now my VPN is on. Um, and we see a lot of packets, a lot of stuff going on. That's the connection and dns other stuff related to the vpn anyway now if we ping google we don't see our icmp requests being sent um, so yeah a vpn masks it a little uh not fully so you still see like our requests stuff like that but um yeah vpn always helps next thing i can say for telnet is um you can download a you can download a arp spoofing kind of checker like a detector that detects if you're being arp spoofed uh, or you could do this yourself let me show you how so in command prompt if you type get mac dash v it'll show you your um it'll show you your mac addresses right here and to see all the mac addresses of the other computers on your network you want to go arp dash a and you're going to see all of them here and if any any of these mac addresses I guess I only have the MAC address for two of them. You just have to ping them. That's how you get their MAC addresses. You just need to ping them. You can use like, I don't know, like a, a network scanner or something. But this is my MAC address. And if these two were the same as this one, and they're different IPs, obviously, I see. If they had the same MAC address as me, 
you know that an ARP spoofing attack is happening because no one should have the same MAC address as you. It's meant to be a unique identifier. And, and if that's happening, you know that you're being ARP spoofed. So you could, I don't know, I, I, from there actually, I don't know what you would do. You would, I don't know, like disconnect from your network. You, you could change your MAC address, um, but uh, like, I guess they can still come back to you. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess you just need to like confront them at that point, I don't know. Why the fuck are you ARP spoofing me? Caught you in 4K. So you basically just catch them and, and yeah, you know that you're being spied on. Now that you know how the attack works and how to defend yourself against it, you should be equipped with some kind of basic knowledge about uh, network traffic, how it's intercepted, and how to protect yourself against it. So yeah. Okay, so that's it for today's video. A few days ago, I started a second channel. I'll link it down below. Uh, I'm just basically gonna post like not like less edited kind of vlogs, some kind of like day in the life stuff, maybe some like extra videos like behind the scenes. I don't know, just like random stuff because it's low key fun. I'm not even doing it for like the views or anything. Like it's just uh, it's just fun. So and also you get to see a more personal side of me. So you know if you're interested, check that out. And also go follow my Instagram so people think that I'm cool. Let me know if you want more Wireshark videos in the future. It's a really fun tool with like a lot of capabilities. Uh, and there's also a lot of tools similar to it that can do other stuff as well. So uh, let me know if this is a topic that you're interested in. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 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 Bye.